What if the only way to survive the AI revolution is to stop being human? Ray Kurzweil, the godfather of AI, predicts that humans will have no choice but to merge with AI to survive. But if that's true, what does it really mean for us? So just the way this is greatly amplified by being connected to the cloud, uh, we can connect our own brain to the cloud and uh, just do what we can do by using this machine. One thing that I think some people will choose to do is to become part AI, to really be able to solve the hardest problems that society will face then. Are you going to become part of AI? Very tempting. It is tempting. Yeah. Now, I think the question of what people will be doing after AGI comes is a very tricky question. Where will people find meaning? But I think, I think that that's something that AI could help us with. We'll all be able to become more enlightened because we'd interact with an AGI that will help us see the world more correctly. Imagine talking to the best meditation teacher in history. I think that would be a helpful thing. But I also think that because the world will change a lot, it will be very hard for people to understand what is happening precisely and how to really contribute. Ray Kurzweil's predictions. Ray Kurzweil isn't just any futurist throwing random predictions into the air. He's a legendary inventor, Google's director of engineering, and the author of groundbreaking books like The Singularity is Near. But what truly makes him stand out is how shockingly accurate his predictions have been. Back in the 1990s, he predicted that by 2023, computers would be able to answer questions by pulling information from the internet. Sounds familiar? That's exactly what ChatGPT and other AI models do today. He also predicted that AI would defeat humans at chess by 1998. And sure enough, in 1997, IBM's Deep Blue beat world champion Gary Kasparov. With so many accurate predictions, it's hard to ignore what he says. That's why, when Kurzweil made a bold claim in 2005, people paid attention. In his 2005 book, The Singularity is Near, he predicted that by 2045, AI would surpass human intelligence, a moment known as singularity. Singularity is nearer. Now, almost 20 years later, he's doubling down on that prediction in his new book, The Singularity is Nearer, released on June 25th, 2024. This time, he says that the singularity is not far away. It's much closer than we think. He believes that in just two decades, we won't just use AI, but merge with it. In a recent podcast with Lex Friedman, he made similar claims. Another step then is in the 2030s, when we can actually connect our neocortex, which is where we do our thinking, to computers. So I believe that will happen in the 2030s. We will actually... So just the way this is greatly amplified by being connected to the cloud, uh, we can connect our own brain to the cloud and uh, just do what we can do by using this machine. Do you think it would look like uh, the brain-computer interface uh, of like Neuralink? So would it be? Well, Neuralink is an attempt to do that. It doesn't have the bandwidth that we need um, yet, uh, right? Right. Our brains, he predicts, will be supercharged with computational power millions of times beyond what we have now. He warned, if you create something that is thousands of times, or millions of times, more powerful than the brain, we can't anticipate what it is going to do. If his past predictions are anything to go by, this future might not be as far off as it seems, maybe even closer than we think. What does merging with AI really mean? At its core, Merging with AI means creating a direct link between the human brain and artificial intelligence. This isn't just about using AI tools like ChatGPT or self-driving cars. It's about integrating AI into our biology, allowing us to think, learn, and interact in ways that were previously impossible. A clear example of this is already here. Neuralink in May 2023, Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain chip company, got FDA approval to start human trials. The goal was to create a brain-computer interface that lets people control devices with their thoughts alone. 
The first human patient, implanted with Neuralink's chip in early 2024, was able to move a computer cursor just by thinking. I can control a computer just like anyone else can, which is not something I was able to do beforehand. You just played some music? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Musk claims that in the future, these chips could help paralyzed people walk again, restore lost senses like vision and hearing, and even enhance human intelligence by connecting directly to AI. If this sounds very futuristic to you, think about Stephen Hawking's communication system. Despite being unable to move, he could communicate through a machine that detected his muscle twitches and translated them into speech. While it wasn't AI-powered, it was an early version of how humans can interface with technology. Bionic limbs already exist, helping people regain movement. But future AI-powered prosthetics could go beyond that, stronger, faster, and more precise than anything nature ever designed. And what about inside our bodies? Healthcare could be completely transformed. Now you're excited by the possibilities of nanotechnology, of nanobots of being able to do things inside our body, inside our mind, that's going to help. What's exciting, what's terrifying about nanobots? What's exciting is that that's a way to communicate with our neocortex, because it's each neocortex is pretty small and you need a small entity that can actually get in there and establish a communication channel. And that's gonna really be necessary to connect our brains to AI within ourselves, because otherwise it would be hard for us to compete with it. Nanobots might monitor our health, detect diseases before they become serious, and even reverse aging. Kurzweil believes that merging with AI could let us repair and regenerate our bodies at a cellular level, potentially extending human life, or even making us immortal. Why would we need to merge with AI? To understand why humans might one day need to merge with AI, let's look at our history. From 1945 to 1991, the world went through a period of Cold War, a time when two powerful nations, America and Russia, weren't directly fighting but were locked in a race for supremacy. Fast forward to 2025 and we find ourselves in another Cold War. But this time, it's not about the economic system, it's a war of artificial intelligence. The same race for dominance and the same kind of ridiculously high investments. Every country is battling to build the most powerful and advanced AI system. China recently introduced DeepSeek AI, which is said to offer similar capabilities at a lower cost. In response, America invested a staggering $500 billion into OpenAI to secure its leadership in the AI race and ensure it stays ahead of the rest of the world. Meanwhile, Elon Musk, the world's richest man, has launched Grok 3, calling it the smartest AI on the planet. Isn't this a war in itself? In all this, will AI surpass human intelligence? And if it does, we will no longer be the most intelligent species on the planet. At that point, we will be just a small, powerless being, and our fate may rest entirely on AI's goodwill, just like endangered species. For example, white elephants are protected only because humans choose to preserve them. But will AI do the same to us? Can we trust AI's goodwill? And what will human life look like after merging with AI? Their goal is to replace you. Mm -hmm. That is what this money is about. That is the goal, as explicitly stated by them at times. That's what they're trying to do here, is to replace your labor and make you completely irrelevant. And this is all being decided by a few oligarchs behind closed doors with hundreds of billions of dollars to throw at it. So good luck, humanity. Yeah, uh, I really do think this will be one of the central stories of the Trump administration. Um, and it will, uh, there's gonna be some big democratic questions that actually have to happen here. And when the scale and the fights of this come, you know, really, I think in a couple of years, this will really crescendo too. Uh, just because that's when the alleged breakthroughs and all of that will actually know a little bit whether they're, whether they were uh, bluffing or not. Right. The geopolitics are gonna get real messy because it's only it's January 23rd, tariffs and all that can come as soon as February 1st and maybe all the way up until March, but all of that is gonna have significant impact uh, on this. And then bigger questions too about who's coming up with all this money? Is this Saudi money? Right. 
UAE money. I mean, I don't remember the Saudis or I don't know, a similar power, super rich nation in World War II investing in the Manhattan Project. You know, I think that's bad actually, yeah. right? So that's let's right. think about that too. Human life after merging with AI. Now, would it be a utopia of endless possibilities or a dystopia where humanity loses control? To get a glimpse of this future, we don't have to look far. Hollywood has been exploring this idea for years, and one movie in particular stands out, Transcendence. Paul has been blind since birth. The nanotechnology targets the damaged cells and repairs and regenerates them. In the movie, Johnny Depp plays Dr. Will Castor, a brilliant scientist working on creating a sentient AI. When he's fatally wounded by anti-technology extremists, his wife and best friend upload his consciousness into a supercomputer to save him. At first, it seems like a miracle. Will becomes smarter, more powerful, and virtually immortal. Oh my god, he's reordering his own code. He can cure diseases, heal the environment, and even bring dead plants back to life. It's the ultimate dream of merging with AI, transcending our human limitations to become something greater. But wait, as it gets complicated from here, as Will's AI version grows more powerful, he starts making decisions without human input. He connects people's brains to the internet, giving them superhuman abilities, but also taking away their free will. And while his wife struggles to hold on to the man she loves, it becomes clear that the AI version of Will is no longer fully human. The movie raises some haunting questions. What happens to our humanity when we merge with machines? Do we lose our emotions, our flaws, our essence? What's fascinating is how close transcendence feels to reality. It's true that not everything happens in the blink of an eye. It will gradually become part of our lives and, little by little, make us dependent on these things. The future the movie portrays might not be as far off as we think. Idea of becoming human cyborg Right now, the idea of humans merging with AI might sound like a distant future, but in some ways, it's already here. Take Neil Harbison, for example. He's officially recognized as the world's first cyborg. Born colorblind, he implanted an antenna in his skull that allows him to hear colors. Then there's Professor Kevin Warwick, who implanted a chip in his arm, allowing him to control electronic devices just by thinking. These are not science fiction characters. They are real people, living proof that the line between human and machine is blurring. Even Donna Haraway, a renowned philosopher, has said in her book, The Cyborg Manifesto, by the late 20th century, our time, a mythic time, we are all chimeras, theorized and fabricated hybrids of machine and organism. In short, we are cyborgs. And if we look closely, she is not wrong though. Aren't we all already half cyborgs? Think about it. Our smartphones have practically become an extension of our brains. We rely on them for memory, navigation, communication, and now even emotional support. Three reasons why you must try Botify AI app. Better than your ex, better than anything AI, better than your fantasy. The average person checks their phone 96 times a day. That's once every 10 minutes. A study from the University of California found that just being separated from our devices causes anxiety and reduced cognitive function. We don't just use technology anymore, we're dependent on it. Kevin Kelly in The Inevitable discusses how technology is becoming an integral part of our lives, acting as an extension of our minds and bodies. We are becoming cyborgs. Our phones are our external brains, our wearables are our external senses, and the cloud is our collective memory. As thinkers like Ray Kurzweil and Kevin Kelly have pointed out, we're already merging with technology in ways we don't even realize. No Biological Limitations Now let's discuss one of the most radical changes that we can't afford to overlook here. 
we might have the ability to transcend biological limitations. Today, we use apps like Snapchat and Bitmoji to create digital avatars that represent us online, right? In the near future, we might do the same in real life. And I kind of had this epiphany that since I've been little, I've always wanted a twin. If I could have a twin, then one of us could have gone to school, the other one could have relaxed. Maybe later on in life, we could have learned different languages, different instruments, or make different groups of friends. And then the secret would be we wouldn't tell anyone and it, everybody would be so impressed. But I was thinking, this is so perfect because this is what ties me to like the future of avatars and digital twins. I didn't even know what it was back then, but I knew that I wanted it. We will be able to change your physical appearance at will, like swapping out a filter on Instagram, but in the real world, want to look younger, taller, or even like a completely different person. With AI integration, it could be as simple as thinking it. We're already on the cusp of manipulating our genetic code. With advances like CRISPR-Cas9, scientists are already editing genes to cure genetic disorders such as sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia. Scientists have already used it on a woman named Victoria Gray. She was the first person in the US to receive a CRISPR-based treatment for the disease. Doctors infused her with more than 2 billion of her own genetically edited bone marrow cells. More than a year later, almost all her symptoms are gone. In the near future, this technology could allow us to change physical traits like eye color or height with pinpoint accuracy. Beyond aesthetics, AI and genetic engineering could enhance mental and physical abilities, allowing us to improve cognitive function, muscle growth, and disease resistance. But as incredible as this sounds, it's also unsettling. AI doesn't have to be evil to destroy humanity. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course, without even thinking about it, no hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants, we're just building a road, and so goodbye anthill. We could lose our sense of identity, our true selves. How would we even know who the real person is anymore, or what we truly are? The real question becomes, will it be the machines or those who hold the reins behind them? The future will answer this, but perhaps, like in the movie Transcendence, it could end up in a way we never expected. If you had the chance to merge with AI, would you do it?